Uh, so this week I added some new updates to my dataset tools list. Um, so I want to talk through uh, one of the tools, which is about deduping. Um, <clears throat> so if you come to this URL, and this is the URL for uh, my tool set, um, and you scroll to the bottom here, you'll see there is a uh, script called dedupe.py, uh, and this removes duplicate images from your data set. Uh, why is this important? Well, one of the things is, especially if you're in scraping something like Instagram or maybe even Flickr, you'll get a lot of duplicate images. And the truth is, like, you don't really want to train uh, a GAN on duplicate images because it might start to like overcorrect toward duplicates. Um, it's sort of a statistics model, right? If it sees a bunch of things that are saying it should look like this and it's the same thing, it's going to deviate more toward that direction. Um, another thing is it just makes your file size bigger. It's like slows down the process. There's just a bunch of reasons why you might want to dedupe some images. Um, <clears throat> I find this especially useful when I'm doing uh, scraping or like converting video to frames. Um, if you hit the wrong frame rate or if there's something in the video where maybe they're going backwards or they're re-looping a similar piece, uh, you're going to get duplicate images in there. Um, and we'll look at a couple examples of that. But basically, I just want to walk through how you actually do use the deduping script. Um, so the first thing is you want to make sure that you're in, uh, you've, quote, you've moved this down to your local computer. Um, you're going to come over here, and I'm already in this folder, so I'm already in uh, Dataset Tools. So you're going to start typing out Python dedupe.py. Um, and then let's start building up our script here. So first thing is we want to look at uh, all the options here. So absolute. I don't know what that means. Like basically, if I were to come to this, I wouldn't know, necessarily know what these mean. So, okay, so input folder. So I know I need an input folder. Um, so what I've done he over here in uh, my finders, I've actually created a like quick little uh, demo set of images. So if I open all of these, you'll see um, this image and this image look pretty similar, right? Like actually they are similar. Uh, you may even think they're the same, but we're gonna find out they're not. Uh, I'll touch on that in a minute. But basically there's five images in here one is an actual duplicate copy of each other. So we're going to grab these. So uh, let's point uh, our input folder to this. Um, I just click on the folder and then hit Command C. And then I come back to terminal and I pay a do input folder. Paste that in. Uh, now I also want output folder. Um, and I'm just going to do dot slash output slash tests. This is just how I generally work. I always have an output folder um, in my uh, in my repo, and then I push it to this folder. That way I'm not overwriting stuff, it just makes it a little bit cleaner. Um, so that's everything we need, I think, so far. So absolute average match. So let's just run this. This is the bare bones, what I know I need to match, and let's run it and see what happens. So uh, what happens? So we loaded all the images, we processed them, um, and then we went through them one by one. And as it went through, it found one match. So it found that this image, the copy image, matches this one. So what happened when I go over to my output folder, and I go to test, and I go to exclude, you'll see that now there are only four images in here. And what it actually kept was it kept the copy. And that just happened because it, uh, it loads in a random order, uh, essentially. So it just found this one. So if I wanted to do this and make this cleaner, I would just remove that copy, and it would be good. So what's interesting here? Um, well. We know that this was an actual copy of the image, and it matched these two. Now, what's interesting here is that these two uh, frames, which are right next to each other, these are, uh, it didn't match this. And why is that? Um, so there's a couple reasons why this could be. Um, one is that, let's say this is, so this is obviously from an older film from, I believe, the 60s. Um, it could be that the film director or editor actually cut two of the same um, frames together, and they're just very slightly different. Um, it could be that one has like a very slight motion um, and it just didn't catch it, or it could be that there's, uh, you know, a slight difference in brightness values between the frames, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing is that, especially with video, uh, there is video compression, um, and video compression will make every frame of those slightly different because of the compression model. So basically what's happening here is this is looking for an absolute match. If you were to overlay these in Photoshop, and actually let's do that now, so we can just drag this into Photoshop, um, and uh, if I copy this right over top of this one, um, and then I go in here and I go to Difference, you'll see it's it looks absolutely black, right? And what's happening is it's subtracting one image from the next, so it should be absolutely black. But if I go in here and I add an adjustment layer of, let's do Levels, and I crank this all the way up. See what happened? 
now there's a little bit of artifacting. And that's basically saying that there, these images are not perfectly aligned. There's a very slight difference in there. Um, this is actually a really hard uh, problem to solve um, using programmatics. You can't just subtract and look for zeros. Uh, you have to do some sort of fuzzy filtering. So what I've added to this library is a thing called relative matching. Um, so basically when you're running this, uh, this script, um, it runs what's called absolute matching. And that just looks for pixel to pixel matches. Uh, and that will always find images that are the exact same. So when I copy an image, it caught that. But it didn't catch these other ones that are actually have this like artifacting issue. So we're going to look at a thing called relative, uh, relative matching. So if you go in here and you run the same command, but you, and let's just call it test uh, relative match. And I do dash dash relative. Um, and then let's run that again, I believe. I don't think there's anything else I need to change here. So now this ran again, and guess what? It found three matches. So now there are only th now there should only be maybe two or three images in this. Let's look. Test relative match, exclude. So now there's only two images. So this did exactly what we wanted it to. Um, and there's some fancy math behind the scenes. It basically like just looks at generalized pixel values um, and tries to figure out how closely they match. Um, and what you can do is if you find that like this is being, you're still not getting everything you want or it's still not matching everything, there's another command you can do that is called dash dash average match. Um, now this is basically a mathematic value, um, which I won't get too heavily into, but the default is 1.0. <clears throat> if you go lower than 1.0, uh, it will be less greedy of a match, right? So at some point, if I actually set this to 0.1, um, and actually, let me just set this to zero, zero. I think it's like this. If I set this to really a really small value and I run this again, let me just actually dump what's in this folder. Um, if I run this again, you'll see that it actually didn't match a bunch of these images, right? So what did I get? So I got all four of those images again. So this is almost like setting this to zero and almost looking for absolute matches. But if I set this really high, so let's just say I set it to 100, I don't actually know if this is going to, let's set it to 500. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to clear out this folder again. And I'm going to run this again. Um, you'll see that it matched a couple images again. Let's see what happened. So it's only got two. Um, it's possible that I have to set this really, really, really high. Um, let me just try 50,000. Um, actually, let's do 500,000. And let's look and see what happened. So I still found those two images. So like basically, um, Oh, well, that's interesting. Huh, okay. So it actually only found two images, but they're the exact same. That's really weird. <laughs> um, but what you, what you will see here is that it, if it excluded all of the, it excluded all the other images. Um, <clears throat> and that's really interesting because um, this got too greedy, right? So like you could play with these values. Um, like it's set to a default of one, and that's going to be pretty good. That's going to give you like a pretty nice median value. Um, you, you might want to try, if say the images are colored, you might want to try setting it to three. You might want to try just playing with this range. I would keep it between like 10 and zero because that's going to basically give you like actual matches. Whereas you don't want to be so greedy that it like eliminates all of your images. Um, but anyway, this is like a really simple way to do some average matching. Uh, and it uses a relative uh, sampling. Um, so that we'll generally catch more images than trying to do just purely absolute matches. Um, so this is all you need to do for dedupe. Um, what I recommend doing is uh, just playing with it a little bit. Um, you know, setting out different output folders and seeing how um, how quickly or like how greedy or how not greedy the image matching is. Um, one thing I should also recommend is like I did this on five total images and it was pretty fast. Um, I'm currently running this on like 7,000 images and it's very, very slow because literally it has to start from one image and then match to all the other images. So it's going to start with one image and then look across all 7,000 other images. It's just a very slow process. Um, but it's fa it's faster and less time consuming than me going through and manually removing duplicates from, from my files. Um, this is a pretty helpful uh, script. I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, if you have questions, let me know in either the YouTube comments or in the Slack channel. Um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.